Let's, uh, let's have a chat to Tom. Tom, it's really good to see you. Thanks for joining us uh, this evening. Um, I'm not going to ask you the inevitable question, how are you? I imagine every single day you get asked that question. But, I mean, the last few weeks, from, from that terrifying moment at Bournemouth back in December to the birth of your first child, your daughter, I mean, can you barely get your head round the amount of changes you've gone through in just the last few weeks? No, it's been quite the whirlwind, you know. If you'd have said I'd be sat here, you know, six months ago next to you guys, you know. You'd have said no, thank you. Yeah, Polite. exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> but here I am and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. How are you enjoying being a dad for the first time? It, it's, it's a busyness, but of a, a, a different kind. Merce can tell you a lot about it. He's experienced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. It's good. It, it really does put perspective on things, doesn't it? So, you know, when you hold, you know, the little girl and you just, like, look into her eyes and brings a real meaning to everything. So, yeah, um, sleepless nights, my eyeballs don't thank me too much at the minute, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's all worth it in the end, isn't it? Has it changed? Because often people talk about when you have your first child, any children, it, it tends to change your outlook on things. In terms of how you look back on the events of December, as you look to the future on what may or may not happen in terms of your playing career, has it given you a different perspective on all of that? Not really, no. Um, I mean, at the time, my, my missus was seven months pregnant, so that was, like, my main concern. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously, when I found out I was OK, it was all just about making sure she was OK then and um, making sure she, she was healthy as can be for the birth. And that's all gone well. Baby's doing really well. So, um, yeah, but it's, it's a weird one, isn't it? it? It does change your outlook a little bit, but um, I feel safer now than I ever have, so... Mm. Um, in that regard, yeah, still, still with the same positive mindset. So in terms of, of what happens next from, from a footballing perspective, where are you at? Um, well, be, being out in Amsterdam, having a few more tests, but it's, um, it's still too early to say at the minute whether I'll be allowed back on the football pitch. But you can't really rush these things, um, as we found out. You know, yeah. you, get, you get this one wrong and then... Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not very good. So, yeah, still taking our time with things, but things are starting to progress a little bit faster now, which is, um, which is nice because I feel like I'm ready to start trying to find out a little bit more about whether I can return or not. Uh, and listen, I'm sure any of the guys sat here will tell you how hard it is watching on. You want to be out there playing, but these guys are far too old for that now. You're still in your absolute prime. I mean, that is an adjustment that has come so quickly to now watching on from the sidelines. How difficult has that been? You've not got that regular business. Yes, you're, you're trying to get on top of this heart condition, but you haven't got that regular business of training, meeting up with your teammates and all that goes with being a professional footballer. How do you feel the inevitable gap that leaves? Oh, the baby's helped. Yeah, know? I'd imagine it has. <laughs> yeah, there's not much um, time for any more. The PlayStation, you know, it hasn't come out since. Um, and I don't know how you guys felt after you retired, but I think like that changing room every day is just mm. is that's what you really miss yeah. being around the lads that camaraderie the togetherness that you get um training yes is okay but then the match days is that that's where it's at isn't it um but it has been hard you know it was it was it was easier when the boys were winning um <laughs> week in week out that was you know i was just so happy for them but then when i feel like i can help and i, I see them you know oh i think i could have helped there or you know Maybe my voice could have helped in that, but that must be such a head screw. You, you, you're looking on, are you? You're looking on at the game against Tottenham at the weekend, for example, and thinking, if I'd been there, I'd have perhaps done that. That that's that's tough, isn't it? Yeah, that's hard. And you know, the, the injuries that we've got at the minute. You know, I just want to come back and and say, yeah, I'll help you out, lads. You know, I'll step into the trenches with you, but you can't. You know, the the lads are doing unbelievable at the minute. I mean. I think Rob Edwards got about eight fit players to choose from. So it's extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy that it's all come on top um, at this minute. But that's that's just another thing where I wish I could just go back and help. But um, yeah, like I said, you can't rush these things. And, and in terms of what's to come, we'll, we'll come quickly to talk about that because, of course, Luton in action against Arsenal tomorrow away on this occasion. But but in terms of your involvement with Luton now from a week to week basis, what, what does that look like? Um, as much or as little as I want. Rob said I can come in whenever I want or, you know, if I need time um, away, then that's brilliant. So, yeah, just as and when, really, um, I've not made it. You know, I don't I don't like going in all the time and, you know, the, the Tom Lockyer show or whatever, yes. and, you know, the media circus that, that could surround that, you know, <laughs> the lads at the end yeah, of the day. You, you look like a man embracing the interest. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is good. And like I said, but then it makes me... It makes me miss it even mm. more when I'm in. So it's hard being in at the same time as it is good. Is it almost harder being in than staying away? Well, it's, it's amazing when you're in and then when you leave, you're like, oh, yeah, that's, yeah. you know, 
and then and then when you're inside and all the lads are heading out to training and you wish you could you wish you could go and join them but um, yeah they've been amazing with me and I can't speak highly enough of everyone at the club it's um oh what a pass <laughs> still got it <laughs> I just, I just, before before we look at the, the the relegation complexion at the moment for, for Luton Town going into tomorrow's game uh, away to Arsenal we, we we often talk about Luton and there's a lot of love for Luton the way they're going about business this season okay they're the bottom three at the moment but we often talk about the belief the fact that they haven't been absolutely spanked by anyone this season they're always fighting what is it about Rob Edwards that gets the very very best out of every player he has you're more than a footballer. You're more than a footballer to him. So he, he sees you as one big family. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of players will say, yeah, they've had that in other clubs, but it really is like a family environment. Um, he's been at the house checking in on me and every day messaging, saying, how are you? Um, yeah, it's, it, it just, it, the, the old cliche, but you just want to run through brick walls for him. Mm -hmm. And you add that with, you know, we've signed young, hungry players who, or players who've got a point to prove. Um, and, and they want to do it for themselves anyway. So you add that together with a manager who, who believes in you and, and tries to get the best out of you every single day, then, um, then it's a recipe for uh, success. But it's hard, it's, you, you know, the Premier League's unforgiving. Mm. Like you said, we've done really well in a lot of games, gone toe to toe with a lot of the big dogs, but we always just, at the minute, seem to be on the, um, on the wrong, end, wrong end of the, uh, of the results. So, yeah, if we could, if we could um, get, get a couple on the other end, then that would be lovely. But one thing is for sure, whatever happens, we're going to fight. Was there a point this season that came where, where there was a kind of change in direction in terms of approach that, that we're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these teams, even if we come away with nothing? We're going to kind of approach it with that, that championship style that we saw from Luton last season. Was there a moment in the season where that changed for you? Yeah, uh, Rob came in one morning and... Um, I think it was just before we played Man City and Arsenal, and he said, lads, what, what we've been doing um, hasn't really been working. We've got these two games now that we're expected to lose. How do you want to go about it? Do you want to go out and do what we've done last year in the Championship and, and get after them and, and see what they're about? Or do you just want to sit back and you know wait to be beaten? Um, and all the lads were unanimous and said, right, let's have it, let's go and have a tear up. So that's what we did. Um, it was probably the catalyst for the run we went on um, and yeah it was a great decision it, it just engages everyone like you said everyone wants to see Luton do well because of that fighting spirit mm. and that's what they, you see in week in week out but Tim some might look at that and go that's that's naive but but for big parts of this season for Luton it's, it's been working hasn't it from what you've seen yeah but it's, it's the manager gives them the confidence you know it's nothing like confidence to the group of players uh, collectively I think Tom possibly agree or disagree that, you know, man for man, when they're playing most of the sides in the Premier League, you wouldn't give them much of a chance. Mm. But collectively, they've got some spirit there, some real heart and, and belief and, and drive. Um, and that comes from the top. That comes from the manager. Uh, people like Mick Hartford who are around that football club who really believe um, that the miracle can happen. Um, and we're sitting next to one here, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> yeah. And it's... Well uh, and it, 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 could, it could happen. You mm. know, they've made a fist of it, a better fist than Sheffield United and Burnley. Two other. It's, the, it's a different sport, almost. The championship to the, to the Premier League. I mean, we've watched a fantastic um, Easter weekend of championship football. It's a great spectacle. It's very exciting, but the, the, the quality is very low. Uh, in, and we're talking about the top teams. Um, but in the Premier League, it's a different sport and you have to be on your game and you get punished for any sorts of mistakes. So... It can take you a long way, but it can only take you so far, that belief and that heart. You need the quality, and they're not without quality, Luton. They certainly have the quality, but they need to start showing it, and Tom's absolutely right. You get bored as a player uh, and as a manager getting patted on the back for, for playing well. Um, you don't need that at this stage of the season. You just need the maximum points, and I, I, I genuinely believe they can make a fist of it right to the end. So what, Tom, is the approach then tomorrow? Because depending on what Burnley do tonight, they could close the gap to just a single point. I mean, they're in form at the moment. They've finally, finally found some form. We wait to see what happens with Nottingham Forest as well. But you've got Arsenal away, sandwiched in between that. You've got Bournemouth. And then comes Man City after that. Is it about somehow remaining in touch going into the final games of the season? What's going to be the approach tomorrow night, given what we saw against Tottenham at the weekend? Probably pretty much the same. Um, it's probably, yeah, I haven't been in, so I don't know, but probably going to go after them and, and, and give them a right fight. And 
um, yeah, our, our season won't be defined by Arsenal away and, and Man City away. You know, you probably say that before the season's even started. If we get anything from them two games, it's going to be a bonus. It's, it's the Bournemouth in between that. Obviously, we had a close game with them um, away at the Vitality, came on the wrong end of that again. Um, it's them sort of games with the, the teams around us now. Mm -hmm. And we've got a nice little run after Man City of, I think, three or four games where potentially you look at which could define our season. So they're probably more the ones you're going to target. But yeah, it's hard for Rob Edwards at the minute. The amount of injuries we've got, <laughs> you, you know, you, you can't change anything. And the lads are having to put massive shifts in week yeah, in, yeah. week out. The way we play on the front foot is so demanding. So um, yeah, not having that ability to change and mix things up is... Um, yeah, it's quite tough. Tom, the boys, I know you've been in a few times. Are they in, are they in the dressing room now talking about the Everton and the Forest points deduction and praying that there might be a few more points coming off? <laughs> this is the thing with it. Like, the whole thing is just messy, isn't it? Like, mm. it could be decided after the season's finished, I'm hearing, you know? Yeah. Um, Everton had 10 and now it's down to six. Um, Nottingham Forest have appealed. What's, that, what's going to come with that? Everton could get more, who knows? So, yeah. What, what, what's just... Rob Ebbard's approach on that? Is it kind of ignore the noise? Because they're, they're all ifs and buts at the moment, aren't they, in terms of what may happen over the course of the next few weeks? Is it about focused on what we are doing tomorrow night, not what might happen? Yeah, I think he's, he's put um, up in, in the change rooms when, when we look at things that Everton, without their points deduction as, as the league table, um, probably the same now with Nottingham Forest, because, mm. you know, you can't... You know, <laughs> Who even knows what's going to happen? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a guess, isn't it? So, um, yeah, at the end of the day, it's going to be about us. If, if they get points off and, and that helps us, you know, I'll be the first one to say I'm delighted. But whatever happens, you know, you just got to deal with it, haven't you?